So good afternoon, dear students, and uh, welcome to uh, Unit Five of Block Two, where we have uh, already discussed in our previous uh, classes the various aspects of uh, human resource uh, development, the process, the activities, you know, the concept, the climate, all of those fundamental understanding we have. Like yesterday, we were discussing about uh, the basic requirement of human resource development activities for the employees. In continuation with that, now whenever we to talk of implementing these HR activities for the employees, the role of the managers becomes significant. Is the managers who have the responsibility of managing or implementing all those HRD activities for the employees and do have the accountability towards achievement of the organization's long-term goals and vision. So today in this session, we are going to discuss the basic role of the HRD managers to achieve the long-term and short-term goals of the organization by properly utilizing the human resources in the said organization. So if we to talk of the role of the managers, now before that, we need to understand what are the basic challenges that are being faced by the managers at the present time. When we to talk of this 21st century itself, we have already discussed that the business organizations are largely affected by the concept of VUCA world, where we to talk of the entire uh, like world is volatile nowadays, is uncertain, is more complex and more ambiguous. So with these kind of volatility or uncertainty or ambiguity, what are the things that we need to take into consideration? What are the things that the managers need to take into consideration is what that matters a lot for us. So if you talk of the basic discussion related to the issues that the managers do face, first of all, we do understand that managers do have the basic challenge of survival nowadays. Why I'm telling this? Because with the opening of, of these global floodgates, with the opening of, of these you know, economies around the globe, there is a stiff competition among the organizations to survive. Organizations nowadays, they are not only competing with the local players, but they are competing with the global giants, global leaders. So they do have a choice either to compete and survive or to perish from the market. So organizations are left out with no other options than to compete and survive. So we say that organizations are, uh, you know, nowadays tuning themselves with the uh, theories of evolution, survival of the fittest. What I need to do to survive, that is what is the thrust of the strategies that the organizations do take for the present time. Do we take it in a positive way or do we take it in a negative way? In a positive way, I want to say that whatever resources I do have with me, maybe physical human resources, materialistic resources, whatever resources. Do I 
make the best possible utilization of all of those resources and will try to have that competitive advantage out of that or I would like to blame the inappropriate availability or inappropriateness of those resources. So do I always have a conducive environment to survive or I need to develop those kind of things. So that is the biggest challenge that the managers do face when it comes to competition. There is a threshold competition among all the organizations to survive. So what can really be focused on is the utilization of resources. And as if we have understood it earlier also, out of all the resources available to the organization, the human resources plays the most significant role, most vital role for the survival of the organizations, right? So how to make the best possible utilization of the human resources? Managers need to think of on that. So with the development of the concept of human resource development, as we have understood earlier also, the focus was shifted from utilizing the human resources for accomplishment of goals of the organization to develop the human resources for the same purpose. So we are no more concerning with the human beings as resources, we are concerned with human beings as the assets of the organization where I can think of investing on the human resources. I can think of uh, uh, no, taking all such kind of activities whereby the human resources can be developed as an asset. Okay. So the thrust has completely been shifted from utilization to development. And what I need to do when we discussed in the basic concept of HRD is to develop competences, commitment, and the organization's culture. Right? So what makes the managers to focus is the right kind of competences of the people available for the organization. So right kind of competences of the people available for the organization. So what should be done for that? So there has to be a proper competency mapping process, which is required for the organization and which is available with the organization. What ever competences are available, is it sufficient enough to meet the desired goals of the organization or is there a gap? The basic objective of HRD is to bridge that gap whereby whatever competences are required for the organization and whatever competences are available for the organization must be matched together. So reducing this competency mismatches is one of the most important dimensions of or most important aspects of the managerial roles in the organization. The other aspect is that <clears throat> whenever we do talk of developing these competences among the people itself, right? So whether the individuals do develop the ability of self-learning, independent learning, at one point of time, we do talk of you know making a development of the competences of the individuals or skill, knowledge, abilities of the people. But for what purpose? I'm giving a thrust on their career development. I'm giving a thrust on their career management processes, career planning processes, succession planning processes. So will it always be possible on my part to take care of each and every employee and make them to learn the aspects as required for them at the present role or at the future role? So somehow rather individual employees must develop the ability to learn by themselves what we call it as a self-learning mechanism or independent learning mechanism and that self-learning or independent learning has to be a persistent process, continuous process. So 
objective is i need to develop individuals but i cannot always you know force them to be developed somehow or other individuals must also take the responsibility of developing themselves now as a manager i do have the responsibility of motivating the individual employees to go for self learning processes independent learning processes that is what that are to be focused on employees must recognize their own needs of growth and development and as a manager i need to imbibe this within the individual employees so that they can they can contribute their best right we are talking of individuals and their learning approaches but at the same time as we discussed that with the evolvement of science and technology with the impositions of external factors on the jobs of the organizations we witnessed that a frequent change in the jobs or in the roles of the employees are witnessed in the past right so what i should do i should not only focus on the individual employees of the organization i should also focus on the various roles or jobs that these individuals do carry out and what sort of changes are witnessed in that particular job or role so there is a requirement of focusing on there is a requirement of focusing on the od processes organizational development processes which focuses on the organizational learning at times you do have a debate whether this organizational learning has to be a continuous process or organizational learning is all about you know learning from the past and making an implementation of that actually the learning should be a continuous process and every time the organization need to have the flexibility in making this learning process is more effective organizations need to have a scope for growth and development need to have a scope for change need to have a scope for implementing any such technological advancements or process advancements altogether so the focus is on development of the organizational learning processes right beyond that nowadays we do have a basic challenge which is there for the managers two things we are going to discuss it in detail one is we are talking of the diversity at the place of work and second one is we do deal with the different generation of employees at the place of work you are talking with talking of two things diversities and different generations what what are the problems that we do have whenever we are dealing with this diversities or uh, you know the generations let, let us talk of the basic uh, concept of this diversity will we call this as a diversity will which focuses on the different aspects of this diversity itself where you can see this diversity will represents four different layers at the preliminary layer we to talk of this diversity within the individual where we understand that no two individuals do have similar sort of characteristics of their own they do differ in terms of their personalities they do differ in terms of their learning abilities they do differ in terms of their thinking abilities communication style the way they process the information all the individuals do have differences within themselves and that is because of the different cognition processes they do have the development of the brain and we have to accept this because these are the aspects which can rarely be modified can be changed it is there within the individuals right as we say that the individuals beyond beyond their uh, personality types beyond their individualistic aspects as the individuals grow and adopt different uh, 
concepts, the values of the external environments. Right? So they are consistently in a process of developing their thought, their brain. So at the second layer, we say there is a diversity in terms of interpersonal relationships or we do talk of these diversities between the people. And why these kind of diversities do emerge? As you can see, the second cycle represents is all about age. So when we do talk of the next that we are going to talk of that is all about the different generation of employees. Now is matters a lot for all of us like this age can bring differences in terms of generations this age can bring differences in terms of thought processes right so age gender whether you know the people do have their own differences among male female nowadays and the government is also you know recognizing transgenders so there is a mix of different age of people different you know people with different gender we to talk of people with uh, no, different physical abilities of their own. Right? Sometimes we have people with appropriate physical abilities. Sometimes we do have people with some sort of physical disorders, but all of them, they do have the equal opportunity to work at the same workplace. Right? We have to deal with that. People belonging to different race, people belonging to different uh, sexual orientation, people belonging to different ethnicity, all of them, they work at the same workplace. And we have to deal with all of them. We have to take all those categories of people, right? As the people grow, they adopt certain societal values, cultural values, and that brings the next level of diversity among the workers. We're talking of people belonging to different cultural background. So that impacts the thought processes, the work, like the perspectives of life altogether. People belonging to different religious beliefs, languages, educational background, residence location, sexual, uh, the, uh, recreational activities, income status, family status, all of them. Right? So we, we create a differentiation among people belonging to these diversified aspects which are based on our societal values. The way we grow up in the society and adopt those societal values, that brings us these kind of differences. And the last level of differentiation that we do have among the people is because of the work experiences they do have, because of their seniority, right? Or the tenure in the organization itself. So organizational level of factors. What is their job role? What is their functional role, right? Work location, functional level of classification, division of work, whether they do belong to uh, a particular union which is recognized, registered and recognized. The, does that union is more influential as compared to other unions? Do they have any managerial position? So it's, it's clearly differentiated. You will go to any such industry manufacturing processes, whatever it may be, you'll see that there is a distinguishing differentiation between executives and non-executives. Executives and supervisory staff. But as a challenge, we do have to take all the people with all of these diversities working at the same workplace as a single unit. How do I do with that? In a simple calculation, you can think of that. No? People with uh, different uh, cultural background do have preferences for different sort of tastes for food. So can, can, I, can I deal with all those differentiations in terms of the fooding requirements of the employees? at the same canton of the organization may be difficult, but I have to. So that is what the HRD managers need to focus on. 
whether they do focus on dealing with all of these diversities in a unique way or be you know engaged with managing the conflicts emerging out of all of these diversities on day to day matters effectiveness of managers will be based on that similarly when i to talk of this uh, workforce generations we we classify all these workforce generations into four such categories like here you can see uh, the people who 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 were born between this 1940 6 to 1964 they are called as baby boomers right the most veteran people in the organization right generation x are the people who have gone between this 1965 to 1980s generation y we call it as 1980s to 2000 and generation z those who have taken birth after 2001 right now you will see the basic attributes of all of these different category of employees that we deal with on day to day basis are different where baby boomers in terms of attributes here you can see in like whenever we talk of this baby boomers they are more assertive they are efficient they are ambition they do have social competencies but as compared to this baby boomers if you will see generation z they are more individualistic they they, they do show their ego they do show their relatedness so a complete shift in terms of the attributes generation x they are more independent entrepreneurial having individuality creativity whereas this generation y category of employees they are more self confident communicative pursuing their goals they don't fear authority all of them. so when we deal with the different category of employees in the same organization we have to deal with different attributes they do come out with see if we talk of this working life you know these baby boomers veteran people they are above average performance is high professional preference is there right they are more uh, you know career oriented but generation x category of people they are adaptable resilient independent self realized you no know, they don't talk of this hierarchies right they focus on job changes generation y they don't need a lot of recognition attention wishes right wishes are actively expressed in a sense that whatever is there in a mind they don't fear to you know speak it forward right high willingness to change right all of those are the characteristics of generation y category of employees and generation z the present day employee there is a clear separation between work and their private life regular working hours beyond that it's their family time it's their leisure time right so uh, work is being considered as a mean to the end in a sense you know uh, they want a positive feedback to grow in their career leadership is not required but anyhow they would like to work upon to feed their family and they enjoy their leisure time beyond their work hours so not that level of dedication to the organization as we see with baby boomers question is when we do see a basic shift among these generations and the diversities how do we manage them what we need to consider challenges the advantages of course right what we need to do is that we need to create a mixed age team and this reverse mentorship program is to be promoted what is reverse mentorship now when we would to talk of mentorship it's always you know the lower level people lower hierarchy people to learn from the higher higher hierarchy people but reverse mentorship is that the people in the higher level of hierarchies in the organization they should be open to learn from their subordinates so learning 
not only passes from top to bottom, but sometimes this learning should also pass from bottom to top. As we move up in the generations of the organization, we should always be ready to accept the new generations, to learn from the new generations and bring a change within ourselves. That's what we need to talk. What we need to focus is a reward system which can really focus on the lifestyle or life stages of the people itself. So workers, when they pass on their life stages, right? We'll see maybe in the next class when we'll talk of the career of the people itself. So people do go with exploration phase, growth phase, maturity phase, decline phase, as same as organizational life cycle or product life cycle itself, right? And only the differences are in terms of the attributes of individuals and whenever we to talk of attributes of the organization, right? So the reward system, which can fulfill the requirements of the needs of the people at different life stages should be focused on. We need to conduct these surveys on regular basis so that any kind of changes whichever is required are to be implemented in a proper way. That is what we need to understand. Avoid is we need to create these groups based on generations. So that has to be, as the first point we say, there has to be a mixed age team, mixed generation team. But normally, people do have a tendency of creating groups based on generations. We should completely avoid that. That will create a distinction among the employees of the organization. That will hamper the learning environment of the organization. Ready? We should not form alliances with employees for all ages. <coughs> so, there has to be differentials. There has to be a appropriate consideration of the attributes and according to that only, they should be a part of the management. Right? But most of the time here, whenever we are dealing with uh, this mixed teams or mixed generations people, we have to omit the assumption of knowing everything. As a manager who deals with people of diversified work groups, I cannot say that I already know this or I know this. That should not be. So with the changes in the employee expectations over generations, what we need to understand is that the people of the organizations are to be dealt in a different way altogether. That is what we need to think. That is what we need to focus on. So with these kind of changes, whenever we do talk of the basic role that the managers need to play for successful implementation of all those HRD initiatives in the organization focuses on the following points, like we're talking of the manager's role to plan for the future human resource requirements of the organization. Now, it's the human resources which can bring a differentiation as we have understood it's the human resources who are responsible for implementing or taking the competitive advantage of the organization right so how do you make an assessment of the future requirement of the organization is what that need to be focused on whenever i'm talking of the future needs of the organization I, I must have a strategy of aligning the requirement of human resources <clears throat> in terms of its skill abilities or role based, right? Considering a future scenario of the organization, future goals of the organization, vision of the organization. That's what we need to make an assessment where we are moving and what we should do to accomplish the said objectives of the organization. So making an assessment is one, but we do have <clears throat> the other aspect of the organization, like how can I get the best people for my job? How can I get the best people for my job? 
So assessment is one part, but actually getting the right kind of manpower is the other aspect of the thing. As we clearly shift, like when it comes to getting the best people, right? The focus is on recruitment and selection, right? But nowadays you do see there's a complete shift in the trends of recruitment processes. Completely. More than 90% recruitments happens through you know, job portals or you know, the social media platform, LinkedIn, references in social medias and other, other platforms. But the traditional recruitment process such as going through a newspaper advertisement now has a rating of less than 50 percent. Why, why these kind of things to happen? Because I understand that if, if I'm going for a recruitment through a newspaper advertisement, it may so happen that I'll get thousands of such applications, but none of those applications will actually match or will conform with the role that I'm searching for. So why do waste in, why do waste the time in terms of searching for all those processes? Right? Why not I'll hire people on the basis of references? Why not I hire people on the basis of you know the preliminary scrutinization done by any such third party? Right? Employment exchanges, whatever it may. As we say, no, we, like it's better not to have people in your organization than to have wrong person in your organization who can really, you know, create all such kind of disturbances in the organization. So that's what we need to understand. So getting the right people is the biggest challenge. And uh, I'll say that actually there is a war going on among the organizations for that. And that is what that lead the organizations to modify their processes. Even sometimes they go for unethical practices like coaching. Sometimes they go for headhunting. Sometimes they go for coaching also. So it's all about how do you take people along with you? What kind of people are there with? Manager's role is to make the best possible utilization of the people available. So recruiting the best will not ensure that the people will contribute their best. Recruiting the best needs to be utilized in a proper way. So there has to be a proper match between the role of the person and the job role. I need to understand that. So through a systematic assessment process, I need to talk of or I need to find out the basic attributes of the individuals and placing him at the right position of the organization so that they can or it, it can match with one another. I need to talk of that. I'm not talking of extracting maximum as we discussed with hard variant model, soft variant model in our previous classes. I'm not talking of extracting the maximum from the people, but I'm talking of proper utilization of resources so that the vestiges can be avoided. We need to talk of that. And then we do have the biggest challenge of retaining them, motivating them, integrating them. Human beings or human nature is unique. No? Wherever they do find a green pasture of land, they will move in that way only, that direction only, right? What is required is by any cost, I need to retain my golden color employees, the most valuable employees. I, I cannot afford to lose them. It's as simple as that. What's the reason? It is because of them, my organization can have this competitive advantage. It's not the numbers that matter, it's the quality of the human resources that matters. So I need to 
retain them at any cost. Of course, many such debates are there whether uh, retention cost is higher or recruitment cost is higher. And many times people do say that uh, uh, in general that recruitment uh, is having lower cost than retention. But in true sense, if you go through the proper analytics of the situation, you'll find out that actually the retention cost can be cheaper than the recruitment cost. So retention of the employees can add more value and other aspects of the organization. That's what we need to do. Retaining them, not only retaining them, motivating them to contribute on a consistent way towards the organization is what the managers need to focus on. So assessing the people for their contribution, continuous assessment processes, that is that is why it is required. Now. Okay. When there is a change in the job rules, when there is a change in the job, I cannot ensure that the person I had recruited, oh, maybe five years, 10 years before the day, will have the similar sort of competences, will or have developed those competences to deal with the present job. If not, I need to develop that as a HR manager, as a HRD manager, I do have the responsibility of developing that within the individuals. So what should be done? Unless and until I do make an assessment of the skills, uh, abilities of the people, can I do that? Mostly not. So that's what we need to understand, manage. Planning for the growth of the people, of course, their career development, you know, career planning, career management, succession planning process, all of those aspects are to be taken into consideration. HRD, in a holistic way, should also focus on a proper industrial relationship system, a healthy industrial relationship system where we need to understand that there has to be proper you know, alignment among the expectations of the management and the workers, between the executives and the workers, okay. where we are talking of a healthy, harmonious relationship. I mean that I would like to develop a relationship which is, which doesn't have any kind of conflict or disputes among the workers and the management conducive work environment. We need to talk of promoting industrial democracy and you know, the HR managers do have the responsibility of that. Job analysis, evaluation of the same, facilitating key organizational tasks, all of those are the prime role that the have in the organization. Basically, if I had to define the basic roles of the managers in the organization, I had to come out with uh, the formal rules, like to talk of implementing various HRD activities. True, they do have the responsibility of implementing the same. They do scientifically understand and counsel the employees. The reason being, nowadays, these employees are undergoing a huge level of stress or in, in a simple sense if i'll talk of they, they don't have that psychological stability okay maybe because of the increase in the workloads maybe because of the changes in the external environmental factors or internal environmental factors okay but unlike earlier days nowadays you know people do have three lives, you know, say, like uh, their personal life, their job life, or professional life, and their social life. Now, most important aspect of this is that people are not in a state to create a balance between these three lives. And that is the reason why the entire work environment is work environment is disturbed. Work environment is disturbed. That's what we need to say. Right? So here, what we need to understand is that employees 
whenever they do have any such issues related to their productivities or performances must be counseled properly to overcome those issues employees productivity is not the only factor employees productivity is not the only factor responsible on the basis of the training no employees productivity can be hampered because of other factors personal factors are included in that you need to explore those aspects right we need to talk of finding out the root cause of the problems that leads to lower productivity of the employees i may not have a solution to their personal problems but understanding them counseling them can help them to recover those aspects more or less hrd managers should treat their employees as their kids benevolent approach should be taken by the hrd managers so subordinate development is not to be treated as a part of the job role for the managers but subordinate development should be a passion for the managers we say like earlier days i was telling you that each and every manager in the organization is a line manager and each and every line manager in the organization is a hrd manager because they are dealing with people so whoever they are dealing with the growth and development of the subordinate is their responsibility but what i am proposing is not to take that as a burden on you but you should have the passion of developing those people if your subordinate will develop they can take you to the next level if otherwise it will be very difficult for us to cope right we say you need to establish a sound communication channel so there has to be transparency in terms of implementation of the policies plans rules regulations and getting a feedback from the implementers to modify those policies plans rules regulations and to talk of all of those things whatever competency lapses are there right uh say we do have a training calendar each and every organization hrd vertical of the organization they to come out with annual training calendar of their own which proposes the different sort of training modules scheduled throughout the year to bridge the gaps in terms of the competencies or to develop those competencies which lack in terms of the people what we do find out out of this competency mapping process but sometimes we we'll also see that the employees do lack in terms of competencies in between so we we call that as competency lapse so whatever is there because of those exogenous factors or the factors which can impact on the organization you have to come out with the basic you know strategies to build those gaps managing the performances of the employees so when i do talk of this performances maybe uh, we'll see it in couple of uh, days that people have two dimensions of their own i do have some category of people who are willing to work who are ready to work but they don't have the requisite skill knowledge abilities to work i am ready to work but i don't have the skill knowledge ability to work and the other category of people are there who do have all those skill knowledge and abilities with them but they are not ready to work only i can do it so no I, i was telling about with those star performers people do have willingness and ability they are the star performers they do have all requisite skill knowledge abilities they they, they won't like to come out with their performances so they do that i do have a problem with the rest of the categories so if people do lack in terms of skill knowledge abilities i can help them out through training processes but when people do have skill knowledge abilities but they lack in terms of their motivation they lack in terms of their enthusiasm 
so what can be done for them they have everything but still they don't come they don't contribute the only one thing that can be done is to counsel them and help them to overcome those syndromes right performances to be recognized performance driven culture has to be there and building a learning environment continuous learning process are to be there to help each and every individual employee to cope with that and let us not talk of like the various systems under this hrd and how this managers need to perform within those kind of systems now broadly we classify all of those systems into four categories the first of such is the career systems of the organization so whenever i am talking of this career systems of the organization i i need to mean that i need to identify the various career opportunities available for the employees of my organization so people are less motivated by monetary worth nowadays but are more motivated by the career growth options so that's the reason why we used to discuss that is career planning career management career uh, you know succession planning processes these are the things which have been given importance but as a hrd manager my responsibility is that each and every employee of the organization each and every employee of the organization must have a career must grow in their career so what i need to do i need to develop the competences within the people as a hrd manager i need to develop the competences of the people not only to take the present job role of the organization but also to prepare them for the future jobs future roles in the organization okay. so whatever competency gap is there i can think of that but at the same time i need to develop those competencies which are to be required by the organization by the job in future days so presenting the employees for the present capabilities and presenting the employees for future capabilities is the basic aspects of the manager's role so assessment of individual employee in terms of their capabilities is what the managers need to do so objective is and it to develop those competencies what the employees of the organization can do what the employees of the organization can you know, contribute towards organization has to be taken into consideration that's what we need to talk certain another process is like a proper feedback system has to be you know instituted has to be taken for the growth and development we don't talk of this feedback system for you know uh, taking this uh, personal decisions or to criticize some of them but this feedback has to be you know more constructive so we do we do talk of this processes such as performance counseling performance feedback performance mentoring performance coaching all of those things all of those concepts have emerged what is the reason for that reason is that i want my employee to perform whatever task is been assigned to him irrespective of his you no know, social status psychological status the employee need to perform i need to give a constructive feedback in terms of their performances because we have understood that human resources are rare in imitable if the employee is not performing before sacking the employee before sacking the employee i need to understand the reasons of non conformity non performance right? 
So we, we need to talk of that feedback to be given to those employees. Right? We need to develop the potentials of those employees. The employee potentials must be developed. So as to take up those future roles in the organization. Yeah. We, some or other, we, we are shifting it from performance appraisal, performance management to potential appraisal. Objective is to understand what a person can do. Objective is to understand the efficacies of that particular person and the way he can contribute towards the organization. We are no more concerned with uh, what the person is doing. We are highly concerned for what a person can do. Right? That's what. And providing them enough opportunities to develop new competences so as to meet the requirements of the future, future job roles in the organization itself. Okay? So, career system of the individual employee has to be completely tailored in a different way or to boost the career system to develop those kind of competencies line managers also play a very vital role in the training systems of the organization where the thrust is complete thrust is developing self renewal mechanism self learning mechanism right and if at all any kind of like uh, competences to be developed for that or some talk, some sort of you know the requirements of the organization is to be imbibed that should be taken into consideration so what it happens as a training manager i need to understand each and every job or role at the beginning right so what are the attributes of a particular role what are the attributes of a particular job i need to understand that and then do i have all those attributes present there with the role occupant if not the basic objective of this you know training nowadays they nowadays they do call it as learning lnd learning and development managers right so for this learning and development managers lnd managers the basic role is to understand the gap between what the employees have and what the organizational role demands and make necessary arrangements for bridging that gap that's what we do managers as a whole they need to completely differentiate in terms of the different job roles and according to that different sort of you know learning processes are to be developed say we do talk of managerial people so for these managers in the organization the competences required are different from that of the technical people or supervisory staff right so i need to understand what sort of competences are required for managers what sort of competences are required for you know supervisors or technical staff what sort of competences are required for workers but all of these all of all of those kind of competences are confined to job or the organization nowadays another one competency which makes maximum impact on the productivity is the behavioral competences of the people do the employees exhibit right behavior at the place of work do they have right learning styles of their own do they have right kind of attitude towards organization do they show their level of commitment do they come out with the level of uh, you know ownership towards organization all of these things are to be considered behavioral competencies decision making ability judgmental ability interpersonal relationships communication style of the people all of those are the thrust areas of human resource development identifying training needs for the employees is another one so need analysis that we used to discuss yesterday you know i said 
there are three different levels at which this need analysis can be done. One is organizational level of need, job or task related need, third the individual, personal related need. So whenever I do talk of this need assessment, I make an assessment of all these three different aspects in jobs, no, sorry, organization, jobs and individuals. Then I compare it to the individual, what he has, can he satisfy the requirements of the job? Can he satisfy the requirements of the organization? Can he fulfill his own competences? And I need to develop that. So what are the requirements of training for the individual employees are to be there? Encouraging the employees to participate, mostly you'll see that nowadays with a lack of interest in the learning process, people have started assuming these training programs as something which is in wastes of money. Even if management of the organization would like to impart training program, but it's the employees who don't want to take that training program. Out of my own personal experiences, I've seen like we used to provide uh, training on various HRD initiatives in different organizations. So, uh, people do treat these training programs as a paid holidays for them. They, they, they don't attend these training programs as something necessary out of that. They just attend at the management, would like them to undergo that training program and bring certain modifications in that. Okay. We are talking of encouraging the employees to take part in that. Otherwise, the objective is not achieved. Right? Sometimes you have to talk of a continuous process of the learning process through this coaching, mentoring, guiding, where you know, the employee of the organization is assigned under a particular person to help the individual employee to cope with all kinds of requirements, right? We say, <coughs> whenever we do talk of this work system itself, Line managers, HRT managers do have a significant role. The basic objective is to enhance quality of work life. Whenever we talk of this quality of work life, we say that the employee should be psychologically, sociologically, emotionally stable. Right? The employee shouldn't have any kind of disturbances, disorders in his life. Right? We are talking of quality of work life. So what is required is, <clears throat> whenever I do talk of this quality of work life, what is required is to promote a healthy work environment where some autonomous bodies can be created, which will you know, induce the participation of the employees in the organization. Right? So, we, we say that it's all about uh, employees' participation, but more or less, we need to understand that employees are required to provide their feedback on certain issues, certain aspects of the organizational decision-making process, but employees should not be treated as the lone stakeholder to the system, right? The participation style is what? Providing necessary support with uh, reviewing with the importance or progress of the said uh, quality of work life, right? So whatever policies, plans, rules, regulations you do have, whatever verticals you do have, say say for example, whenever we do talk of this quality of work life, right? We, we come out with a particular concept, uh, uh, say grievance settlement procedure. When employees of the organization, they need to settle down their grievances, does the grievance settlement procedure of my organization is easy for them to accommodate? If I develop a mechanism which is very complex, workers will be reluctant for that. So in that case, can I get the proper feedback from the workers? May not. So I, I, I need to make the processes simpler. I need to make the processes user friendly. Right? So that the importance can be given to that. We do talk of redesigning this supervisory role to become more supportive and facilitative. 
that's what supervisors do play significant role each and every supervisor is a line manager is your manager you need to understand they are the people who do have the responsibility of dealing with workers they are the people who do have the responsibility of developing them so you need to understand and finally we will talk of this role of hrd managers to develop this cultural system cultural system of the organization so here you need to understand as a part of developing a consistent cultural system the hr managers do have the responsibility of analyzing and you know uh, analyzing the various verticals various practices and need to understand that whether all of these practices are in coherence with the system or not okay? so establishing the culture establishing the climate and whatever is required for the establishment of culture and climate is there ensuring that are the role of the hrd managers right so friends here we have understood that uh, like here we can sum it up with that operational role or role of the hr manager as a learning specialist right or role of the hr manager as a administrator where to implement all those things or as a consultant so here hrd managers do play a significant role for the implementation of all those hrd activities so uh, let us wind it over here friends we have understood how this hrd is important for employees how this hrd is required for the managers of the organization for its implementation okay? in coming classes we'll see the other aspects other deeper aspects of this hrd as a whole so thank you very much for attending this session and we'll meet tomorrow once again with a new concept of hrd thank you have a good day